After nine years of close collaboration between the Environmental Ministry, the Congolese Nature Conservation Institute, the Lukuru Foundation, and local communities, the Lomami National Park was finally established on July 19, 2016. It provides home for many endangered species, such as bonobos, forest elephants, Congo peacocks, and okapis. The purpose of the park is not only to protect its highly diverse wildlife, but also to ensure sustainable, long-term livelihood of the surrounding communities. For the park to be secure, these communities must find other sources of income besides large-scale commercial hunting. One of the many challenges is that certain communities lost part of their traditional forests when the park was created. In general, it is important to reduce the burden that bushmeat trade puts on the forest because this unique wildlife cannot support continuing depletion from high exploitation. Local communities need alternative livelihoods. In the buffer zone of the Lomami National Park, the Lokuru Foundation initiated a project that might provide alternatives to hunting. The most important villages for these activities were those closest to the park because it is from those that hunters operate. They represent the greatest danger to the park fauna. Given that hunting is men's work, the target was especially men. Fish ponds were chosen as the alternative to hunting because numerous villagers close to the park had tried fish ponds and failed, and many requested assistance. Unlike agriculture, but like hunting, Tending fish ponds is seen as a man's occupation. The project was started in October 2015 by establishing seven pilot fish ponds in three villages close to the Lomami National Park. Two in Beni, two in Kakungu, and three in Makoka. By March 2017, many fish ponds have been made by local people under the supervision of experts of the Lukuru project. Even more were under construction. These ponds are, or will be, stocked with young fish from the pilot fish ponds. Ça c'est le premier étang qui a été ensemencé par le tilapia nilotica. C'était un an, donc en août 2016, on avait ensemencé ici. On aura maintenant l'occasion à tout celui qui termine son étang, il vient, on ouvre et on donne les, les alevins. Tout celui qui termine son étang, il vient. Là c'est notre bassin d'alevinage. Even though the fish breeding is successful, one challenge remains. How to access the markets. These villages are far from the markets of Kindu, which are accessible only by narrow, unmaintained roads. Only products with high value are worth the investment into transport to the Kindu markets. The high protein supplied by the fish is similar in quality and quantity to that in bushmeat. So it has a great potential not only to nourish the farmers' families, but also to generate income. The transport of bushmeat is carried out by bicycle or motorbike. An option that will be tested is employing bushmeat transporters to carry fresh or salted fish the same way as they carry bushmeat. Only when a system is established to assure that pond owners have access to market can we say that the project has fully succeeded. The fish pond project is one way to address the issue of developing a livelihood that is a stable alternative to hunting. This is critical in the buffer zone of every protected area.
but in order to tackle illegal hunting, we constantly need information. For example, who is hunting and why? Are the hunters local or do they come from other places? Hunting contexts differ at each of the sites. We need evaluation at the local level and also broad country-wide data evaluation. And in the long term, we need a network to exchange information about these questions in the different sites of the Democratic Republic of Congo to combat illegal hunting more efficiently. Hunters are the poorest in the bushmeat trade chain. They hunt because they see bushmeat as their best option for gaining cash. There is a need to make domestic meat more attractive than bushmeat. One way that could help on the national level is adjusting taxation to make bushmeat too expensive for most people compared to domestic meat. Tax could be levied either on bushmeat sold in markets or on bushmeat transport or both. At the level of markets, the current law does not distinguish between selling bushmeat, domestic meat, and fish. All in all, there is a need to reassess the laws that concern hunting and prioritize them for application. A correctly directed and applied legal system could reform the bushmeat trade. <laughs> Savannah, 